People in Japan are being warned to stay alert for another earthquake. Scientists at the Geospatial Information Authority believe two tectonic plates off northeastern Japan have slipped more than 20 meters. The area was the epicenter of the 2011 earthquake. Researchers looking at activity deep under the sea found the plates did not move as much as projected. They say this could lead to a buildup in geological stress. They say one of the plates has moved eastward a distance of 95 centimeters near Miyagi Prefecture's Oshika Peninsula. Another plate pushed the city of Kitaibaraki 48 centimeters. They believe one of the reasons plates are moving is to free geological stress. Hisashi Suito is a head researcher at the Authority's Crustal Deformation Research Division. He used a GPS-equipped device installed on the seabed to analyze westward movements of part of a continental plate. He has found that the mantle underneath the Earth's crust can be a strong influence on crustal movements after an earthquake. During the quake, the mantle moved west, dragging the seabed with it. I think plates near the surface are also being pulled toward the west. Sito thinks a geological stress is building up around the boundary of the plate off Tohoku region in northeastern Japan. He warns that major earthquakes and ensuing tsunami waves could occur in a coastal area stretching from northern to eastern Japan along the Pacific. The probability of further quakes is said to be decreasing, but I don't think that's right. Sito says four years after the disaster, people still need to be on alert. The accident in Fukushima is just one of the legacies of the March 2011 disaster. People in Japan will mark the anniversary of the earthquake and tsunami this Wednesday. More than 15,000 people died, and about 2,600 others are still listed as missing. Fukushima Daiichi suffered three meltdowns, and it was hit by three hydrogen explosions. Radioactive contamination forced tens of thousands of people to leave their homes. Evacuation orders are still in effect for large areas. Work is underway to decommission the plant. But experts say the process will take 30 to 40 years. The operator of the facility has made some progress, but it continues to face setbacks. NHK World's Noriko Okada reports. You could say we've made a big step toward decommissioning the reactors, but we have to be even more careful as the work progresses. In December, work was completed to remove spent fuel from the number four reactor building. The material needs to be cooled continuously in order to remain safe. This is being done in a separate building since the number four building was damaged by hydrogen explosions. The next step will be to remove fuel from the buildings where reactors suffered core meltdowns. An even more challenging task is removing molten fuel. It is believed to have dried and hardened. Researchers are still trying to find a way to remove it. This is a huge challenge. We have to combine techniques in ways that we have never tested before. Some combinations will work, but in other cases, we will have to make fundamental adjustments. The decommissioning process is already behind schedule. Problems involving radioactive water were the biggest cause of delays. Last month, TEPCO executives announced that contaminated rainwater has leaked into Pacific Ocean. They admitted that they knew about the situation as early as last April. TEPCO's response infuriated local fishermen. We are truly very sorry for the worry and trouble we've caused the fishing industry. Why didn't you tell us honestly about what was going on when you knew about it since last year? We can't trust you anymore. Another problem is groundwater that mixes with highly radioactive water that is injected inside a crippled reactor containers. Every day, about 300 tons of contaminated water accumulates at the facility. TEPCO has set up nearly 1,000 storage tanks. But once they fill up, 
there will be little space to add more. Contaminated water isn't the only issue. Heaps of black bags sit on the side of roads. They hold radioactive soil and other waste collected during decontamination work. The piles of waste have slowed down the entire rebuilding effort. Leaders in Fukushima allowed the central government to begin building the storage facilities. Officials in Tokyo hope they will start receiving shipments of waste this month. All told, the government plans to build intermediate storage sites over 16 square kilometers. But so far, it has received permission to use only the two sites. Their small size means they will be able to hold only one-tenth of one percent of the accumulated waste. Government officials have been negotiating with over 2,000 landowners in a bid to buy more land. As of now, None of them have agreed to sell. Noriko Okada, NHK World. Many survivors of the March 11 earthquake are struggling to move on. More than 220,000 of them are still living in temporary housing. Officials at the Reconstruction Agency say the number has dropped by 35,000 since last March. But they say many evacuees are still living in temporary homes or with relatives all over the country. Officials had prepared more than 53,000 housing units for displaced people, and 99% of them are still in use. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has reiterated his commitment to rebuilding northeastern Japan. People in the area are still trying to recover from the powerful earthquake and tsunami and the nuclear accident. Abe spoke on the eve of the fourth anniversary of the disaster. Tomorrow will mark the fourth anniversary of the Great East Japan earthquake. I would like to once again offer heartfelt condolences to those who perished. The Prime Minister said efforts to reconstruct the affected area will continue for years to come. Next year in March, the five-year intensive reconstruction plan or reconstruction period will end and a framework plan for the next five years will be compiled by this summer. I have instructed my cabinet members to work on this as if they were all reconstruction ministers. The government will continue to support people in the affected areas so that they can get back on their own feet and live their lives with hope for the future. Fukushima will be a new center for recovery and cities and towns will be rebuilt. We will make Fukushima a hub where the most advanced research, technology and industry and robotics and renewable energy will be created. As we move into the fifth year since the nuclear power plant accident, we will continue to help people so that they will be able to support themselves. And for this, in addition to compensation for rebuilding businesses, we will extend support to cover areas so that people will be able to restore their livelihoods. A policy package for the rebirth of Fukushima will be determined by May at the earliest, and by summer, we will have a vision for the future of Fukushima compiled. The accident at Fukushima Daiichi is posing another challenge. Prime Minister Abe said the government will lead efforts to secure ways to store nuclear waste long term. We, the generation that produced the radioactive waste, must try to ensure that we will not pass it on to the next generation. We must re-examine our practices, and based on scientific evidence, the government will take the lead and give instructions so as to realize final disposal. 
More than 18,000 people died or went missing in the disaster. Over 3,000 have died because of indirect effects such as illness or stress while living as evacuees. Nearly 230,000 people still live in temporary housing. People in Japan are talk, taking time this week to look back on a day that caused so much hardship and heartache. The fourth anniversary of the March 11th earthquake and tsunami is on Wednesday. Business owners in one northeastern city know firsthand how tough it's been to rebuild. The sea swallowed their shops and since then they have had to move from place to place as the reconstruction effort progressed. NHK World's Mikiko Suzuki has the story. About 20 restaurant and shop owners operate in this temporary mall in Kesenuma's Shishiori district. Kenichi Shiota is one of them. His original restaurant and his house were swept away by the tsunami. And he doesn't yet feel established in his new noodle shop. It's been four years, but this is still the situation we're faced with. I would not call this revitalization. It's more like restoration. This is Shishiori three days after the disaster. The earthquake caused the ground to sink, and the tsunami swept away everything in its path. Shiota led efforts to open the first temporary shopping mall soon after the disaster. He organized fellow business owners from the district. At the time, this boat represented Shishiori. Many visitors traveled to see the 60-meter-long fishing vessel that was swept inland by the tsunami. But residents didn't want to be reminded of the disaster, so the boat was taken away in 2013. And the number of visitors decreased. Land elevation work has been carried out in this district since 2011. Last September, the temporary mall had to be moved ahead of the start of construction. The new location is far from homes and schools, so there are few customers. But Shiota and the other shop owners can't settle here either. They'll have to move yet again next year. We all want to run our shops here in our hometown. But we may have to choose between going out of business and leaving this town. Land elevation work begins with the removal of debris. Next, old water and gas pipes are taken out. Then, drains are put in to prevent liquefaction. And the ground level is raised by piling up dirt. Finally, new infrastructure is installed. The work is expected to take another three years. Keiichi Kato and his wife Katsuko are also facing an uncertain future. For more than 40 years, they ran a vegetable and flower shop. But they lost it in the disaster, along with their house. Now, there is no one to take over their business and they can't borrow money from banks because of their age. I don't know how things will go in the future. I'm old and I'm worried. Even if I'm asked to leave, I won't have anywhere else to go. Kato and his wife now live in temporary housing. They are torn between reality and their wish to rebuild their own shop after the ground elevation work is completed. I'm keeping myself busy with work and trying to ignore my worries. I just try to take each day as it comes. That's all I can do. Even after four years of anxiety, shop owners in Shishiori are still struggling to map out their future. Mikiko Suzuki, NHK World, Kesenuma.